Please let me begin by thanking our diligent committee staff for all their hard work on this bill, including on both the majority and minority sides. You're a great group of Americans. Particularly, I'd like to thank Scott McKee and Adam Wilson, and on my personal staff, Maylee Boyce and Margaret McGinnis. I also wish to thank Representative Derek Kilmer for his diligent and honorable public service as we present what will be his last bill. Derek has been a stalwart, serious, and exemplary member of our Energy and Water Subcommittee for many years, and his sincere dedication and constant commitment has improved our nation for today and the tomorrows to come. We will miss him greatly. We all know he will find a way to keep fighting for a more perfect and greater union, and we thank him for his public service, his meritorious efforts to meet the needs of the American people. Energy and water undergird America's way of life. They are not optional. They are essential to sustaining life itself. Our nation is projected to grow to 400 million people by 2050, three times more people than following World War II. Our bill must catch up to the future, not backpedal. Sadly, this Republican energy and water bill does not meet our nation's imperative for the future. America must become energy independent in perpetuity. Their bill slow walks our nation's obligation to assure modern, dependable, affordable energy and clean water for millions of our citizens. Thus, it fails to embrace a modern and more secure future. We cannot behave as though it is 1950. This energy and water bill cuts $1.5 billion, or 43%, from the Department of Energy's Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy programs. They are essential to meeting our nation's new challenges due to weather-related disasters as we, we witness home and commercial business insurance rates rising all across our country. This bill revokes $8 billion from the Department of Energy's loan programs. A cut of this size would immediately constrict the Department of Energy's ability to spur American manufacturing and innovation in this new climate age. The bill also slashes the weatherization assistance program, resulting in approximately 54,000 fewer low-income homes receiving weatherization services across our country. And let me be clear, the cuts in this bill will absolutely jeopardize innovation to achieve American energy independence and security. These cuts will hurt and these cuts will increase energy costs for millions of our fellow citizens, including families and seniors struggling to make ends meet. This bill pushes our nation backwards. While our nation has made great strides toward energy independence after half a century of effort, we have not reached home plate and scored on U.S. energy independence in perpetuity. For example, the United States is fulfilling more of its crude oil needs with domestic supplies than ever before. Thankfully, U.S. net crude oil imports are at the lowest they've been since 1972. Let Russia keep its own oil. While decreased reliance on imports should give the U.S. more control over prices, consumers are not seeing the full benefits in the price they pay at the pump. With an adversarial Russia weaponizing energy to destabilize global markets, it is clear that America needs more energy innovation and diversification to reduce our dependence on any form of imported foreign energy supplies. Further, we must not cede our solar and chip future to China. We know China is more than willing to dump product and components to wipe out our domestic industries, and we've witnessed this. We know this because it's happened in steel pharmaceuticals, electronics, and automotive. It simply cannot happen in anything related to energy. In this new century, marked by extreme weather events and increasing natural disasters, this bill endangers efforts to address the climate crisis. During 2023, there were 28 separate billion-dollar weather and climate disasters. In this country, in 2024, we're already witnessing an escalation of events. Heat waves across America, it's 115 degrees in Phoenix today as I talk. Major flooding throughout the Midwest. Wildfires burning in the West, earlier than ever. 
and the most intense hurricane to form in the Atlantic so early in the year. We have states hitting rainfall records. June was the 13th month in a row to set a monthly temperature record. The Wall Street Journal reported property insurance premiums are rising significantly or being completely cut off across our nation. Hello? The total cost from the billion dollar disasters in 2023 was a record setting $92.9 billion, almost $100 billion. We can either continue to pay more for disaster response or we can invest now in climate mitigation and adaptation that will also lower costs for consumers, create jobs, and increase our global competitiveness. The pathway seems crystal clear to me. Thus, I oppose the Republicans' cuts to vital energy and climate programs. Shortchanging these advances pushes our nation backwards. Slow walking energy innovation, failing to modernize our nation's electric grids, failing to advance innovation, relative to our global competitors in materials and manufacturing and failing to build domestic end-to-end -end supply chains for jobs in the new energy economy, American jobs. In other areas of this bill, while I support many of the bill's efforts to maintain a safe, secure, and credible nuclear deterrent and robust naval nuclear propulsion program, God bless them, I am concerned how this bill cuts nuclear non-proliferation programs that reduce nuclear risks and counter the global challenge of nuclear proliferation. Finally, the bill includes numerous controversial poison pill policy writers that sadly show extremist Republicans are not interested in bills that can gain bipartisan support and become law. I truly do appreciate working with Chairman Fleischman, a very, very hardworking member, and our colleagues to develop and pass bipartisan bills, as has long been this committee's practice, including last year. I am saddened that this vital subcommittee is being steered to return to a partisan process for this fiscal year 2025 House bill. Americans all witnessed how chaos and extremism played out last year. And we all fully should know a bipartisan compromise is the only avenue to finalize these bills. Americans expect us to negotiate our differences, work together across the aisle, and do our jobs to find the big middle. America's future relies on the new age frontiers of energy and water. America can and must do better, and I urge my colleagues to oppose this bill. I reserve the balance of my time. Thank you.